how can I delete from my Snowflake table using another table of IDs or something that I have of items that I want to delete. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we take a look at using delete in Snowflake uh, using Python, and we're going to take a look at the ways that you can delete records uh, and, and a couple of gotchas uh, that you might run into if you come from the traditional SQL uh, database world. And we're going to use the delete using uh, command, which is a great one uh, that is kind of like using a delete with a join in traditional SQL. Let's get to it. Looking for additional topics in this area? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, so this is a pretty fun one today. Uh, a couple of gotchas in here. Um, some things you might not expect if you're using uh, traditional SQL deletes with joins and things like that. Um, so we're going to demonstrate how those do not work in Snowflake um, and the methods that do work. Um, there's one method from your traditional uh, way of doing it with another list that works um, and another method that does not. And so we're going to demonstrate those two plus the, the way that Snowflake has provided for us to do our deletes. Okay, and I'm just going to start how I normally do. I've got the import snowflake.connector as sc at the top there. And then I'm pasting in some of my uh, credential information there um, that uh, I do have in variables. Uh, if I was to scroll up, you would be able to see those. So you can load your snow user, snow pass, snow account, and your role um, with your information that you have for your warehouse. Um, and, uh, and then we can get started. And so as you can see, we created that CNN, that connection object there, and we've started our try accept block there. So uh, be aware of those. That's what the try means up above there. So we're going to uh, catch any errors that happen gracefully and then close our connection if we need to and uh, and so the next thing we'll do after creating our connection object is we'll create a cursor and we'll call that CS and uh, and then we have uh, an SQL statement very simple it's just going to be select ID and project name from the project table there and then um, and then we're going to uh, load up a variable with the return from the uh, cursor.execute, so cs.execute of our of our SQL against the Snowflake uh, database there. And then I'm just going to loop through each of those um, and print off anything that comes back. Um, it's not going to be pretty, but you'll get to see what is in the table there. And so I can do uh, our accept um, part of our uh, part of our try accept here and uh, so I'll do accept exception as E um, and then if we do get an error we'll just print that out into the console um, and see what see what the problem is and then we'll do a finally in there um, and uh, and then this is where we'll disconnect regardless of whatever happens we're gonna disconnect from Snowflake so that we don't leave any connections open or anything like that so we'll do a cnn.close, and then we'll uh, give some feedback. We'll just say close, and then we'll print done at the end. That should do it um, for some demonstration. So we're going to rip through a couple of uh, deletes here. Um, but first, we'll show what is actually in that table. Um, and uh, just making sure I've got everything set up here correctly. I think the table name is actually project, not projects. And, uh, and then we can sort of see what happens. So I go ahead and I can hit F5 on my keyboard to launch my Python script from the idle shell here. And uh, we should get some feedback here. Okay, awesome. So there's our list. Uh, we've got our ID as the left-hand column and the name of our project in the right-hand column. And if I had just changed that SQL string to look at the project temp table instead, um, you'll see that, oh, there we go. We've got three rows uh, in our temp table. So you can imagine our temp table in this case is the, the ID list that we want to delete from our main table. So you can imagine if this was, you know, 100,000 rows or a million rows or something, 
um, then we might have you know 10,000 rows in our temp table um, and those would be the items we want to delete from our main table and so in order to go ahead what we can do is we're going to create our delete statement and we're going to use the uh, delete using uh, statement that Snowflake has provided us. And uh, I do like to use the aliases uh, in my delete statements here. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, delete um, from projects and I'll put a, a PRJ as our as our short form or alias for our table because we're going to have a couple of tables in here. And, uh, and so building this string, I'm also putting it in brackets uh, so that we can build the string sort of on multi-line so we don't create some spaghetti here. Um, so there we go. We've got delete from project PRJ uh, using project temp and we'll call that TMP. Um, and that's the difference from our, our usual SQL is the using statement. Um, and then we can use the where uh, instead of a join that you might see in a, in a traditional way of doing it, um, you can use the where tmp.id equals the prj.id, and that would be our delete statement with using. So that's going to do that join between those two tables, and then it's going to delete from the project table, um, from that project table using the project temp table. Um, and that's got an alias of TMP where the TMP ID is equal to the uh, project ID there. And so those are the IDs we want to see 9001, 9004, I think is one, and then 9112. Uh, those three should be deleted from our table. Uh, and, and we should see that uh, when, we, when we run this uh, statement here. So I'm going to connect. Um, I'm going to execute that one and you can see that it uh, does have a return record of, and it gives the number of records uh, affected and that's three. So we got three deletions there and, uh, and so that deleted it and, and it uh, appears to have committed it as well. Um, and so if you don't have auto commit on you may need to, to use uh, a commit statement after this in order for it to be committed and so if you do notice that the changes are not saved after you run the statement you may need to just issue a commit statement after um, as the next statement here but as an alternate way of using your alias here you can also put a query inside of brackets uh, after the using statement so that's another way of, of doing it so you could do select ID from some other table of things that need to be deleted. Uh, join this on that, you know, to make sure that list is the right one. You can do that inside of brackets here uh, with the using statement. So just be aware of that. That's another way that you can use that uh, using statement. Um, and, um, and that's sort of uh, an alternate way of using that. But this is our basic statement here. Um, if I rerun it, uh, you can see it, it gets zero, zero rows uh, because we already deleted those three rows and that's our basic statement right there. And so now if I go ahead and go back and select from our project table again, um, you'll see that the uh, project uh, listing in our project table is now minus three of the original records. Uh, which was a result of our delete query. So I'll hit that F5 and you can see now we've got a shortened list of projects um, because we deleted these three, 9001, 9004, 9112. We deleted those from the original list and so that is exactly what we want to see there. Okay, so in the background I have reinserted those records so I'm going to hit F5 on that again. So now we're back to our original list. I have reinserted those three records and we're going to do an alternate way of deleting um, which is a way that you guys might uh, recognize. Uh, so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to do our delete from project uh, where our ID is 
in, we'll use that in statement, and then a select, which is um, going to give us that subquery there, and we can uh, put a select in into our uh, where statement here, where the ID is in, and then we'll do select ID from our project temp table. So that's another way of doing it that um, in my experience is not as efficient as using a proper joined query uh, but it does work um, so it depends on the, the number of records that you have so you can run that delete uh, with the subquery and Snowflake will work with that and uh, I've had some success with it but in general the using statement seems to work better um, so now if I run that uh, with the subquery you can see we did get three records uh, deleted um, and so now if I go back and I select that uh, project table again uh, so I'll just do that select ID and project name from the uh, project table again and just hit F5 um, then we'll see now our list has been shortened and we have our uh, the limited list or reduced list uh, that we want to see. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've uh, reinserted those rows again so our project list is full again. We're going to try and delete those records a third way and this is a really big gotcha um, for some of you guys if you're used to using the standard sort of uh, SQL way of using a join. So I hit F5 on that select. You can see the rows have been reinserted, and so we're starting with our fresh list again. And I'm going to use more of a traditional statement here. So I'm going to use the delete PRJ, and we'll do uh, from uh, project, and then we'll use the alias PRJ there. So now we've said which table we're deleting from delete PRJ from project PRJ. And then we'll join our uh, project temp table uh, and we'll call that TMP uh, on TMP.ID equals PRJ.ID and then you, you might do something like add a where clause um, that's very typical so where you know some factors or whatever you need in this case I'll just say where ID is not null and, uh, and then I'll run that one and you can see that runs into an error which is caught by our error handling uh, our exception block there and it gives us the errors and it says there's a bunch of stuff wrong with this doesn't work um, and in fact it could be ambiguous uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll fix that on the ID there just so we've got something I'll save it um, and or I'll, I'll use the TMP ID there we go and uh, and I'll hit F5 again and you'll see we get the same errors because it just doesn't like it. Snowflake doesn't does not support this statement. So this is a big gotcha. If you guys have any code that you're working on that uses this kind of, uh, if you're moving it into Snowflake and it uses that kind of join, you're probably going to have to convert it over to the using style, um, and uh, and that would be something you have to consider for your project. And so as you can see, if I select that ID and project name again from project we're going to get the same list um, that we had um, at the very beginning and uh, if we wanted to delete from that we could uh, use our using statement which I'll I'll demonstrate again here and so we could delete from uh, project PRJ uh, using our project temp table TMP uh, where the IDs are equal. So this is a really great way of, of using um, deletes in your application or in your database um, and I think it's a really handy uh, method uh, but just be aware of the gotchas. There are some ways that Snowflake does not support the deletes. Uh, make sure if you do not have auto commit that you do put a commit statement after your delete. Um, you may need to use that as another uh, statement um, so just be aware of that as well um, so that your work does get does get committed and uh, there we go I've run our, our delete statement 
and as expected our three rows were deleted and so now I can go back and do my select ID and project name from the project table and we should have our shortened list once again um, just for demonstration so I'll hit F5 there I saved it and that is exactly what we want to see and that's how you can use delete using in Snowflake. Need additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.